Hey there, you guys. So thank you for bearing with me and having this class as a video. Uh, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, this session is essentially going to be talking about SA3. Okay, we're getting to that point where we are almost done. See how I upped the energy for you right there? We are almost done. So get excited. We've only got, what, like a little over a month left, and then we're all set, free and clear. All right, so hopefully by the time you've watched this, you have either finished through the SA2 cycle or you're just about to, so don't let this confuse anything that's going on with SA2. That stays over there. SA3 is what we're focusing on in this video. All right, so let's go through the assignment instructions here. Okay, so the overall purpose of the essay is making sure that you can create an argument. We've already done persuasion with the first essay, right? Illustration example essay. Now, we're using those similar tactics, the same way that we discuss evidence there in our argumentative essay, right? The, the anecdotal evidence, the experiential evidence, right? We're using that now coupled with research to help guide our ideas. So take a look at the samples that I posted on Blackboard. Um, they are in the announcement that I make with this video, and then they will be posted in the weekly module um, a little bit later on in the week. Okay, so um, in terms of the argumentative essay, right, that's the new addition, the research. And there's a, one other thing, which is a counter argument. We will talk about that in a minute. Okay, so let's just kind of take a look here. Okay, in terms of your research, you're going to be using Galileo. So put on the, um, I don't know why I was going to say put on your memory cap. That's weird. Um, I don't know one of those exists, but I know quite a few people who would like them. Um, but remember what we talked about in the library. When we went, we saw the librarian. We saw her talk us through using Galileo, finding citations on there, things like that. I also have a video that I'll link in the announcement as well uh, that is basically me creating the sample document, um, you know, the types of source choices I make, that sort of thing. That video is about an hour long, but it's broken into chapters, so it should make it so that you can pinpoint things you have questions about. Um, and then give you the tools that you need to get out of there and start doing it on your own. All right, so uh, your argument is the big deal. All right, the focus on your source material, this is where so many people go wrong. You think, oh, my source material, it's amazing, it's beautiful, I need everyone to see it. That's the big thing. They're the experts, so they need to overrun my essay. No, not true, not true, because you are doing your research, you are becoming an expert, have that confidence in yourself, right? Your ideas are strong enough to make this essay, but you just need research to back it up because that's what we do in academia, right? Nothing, um, you know, everything that we write, the higher you go is going to have a research component just because research brings credibility, right? It brings additional backing to your ideas and helps make your argument clearer. Now, you'll see here, I, I made a little comparison uh, maybe a little metaphor, if you'd like, uh, about using research, right? You are the driver of this argument, okay? Your research here, your scholarly sources, right, because we are using only scholarly sources, are meant to be passengers that help you check your blind spot. These are sources that help you, help inform you about things that you didn't quite know, right? Things that, you know, until you research them, you just didn't know about. And that's the beauty of research. You learn as you go. You adjust your argument based on the fact that you're seeing a bigger and bigger and bigger picture of what's happening uh, in that particular topic, right? That's what you want to be doing in your research, okay? Think like you're, what was it, Jenny from the library, right? Research is a circle. You have to be consistently going back and kind of thinking, refining, uh, maybe finding different sources that help you in different ways, right? Things like that. Don't try to put a really prescriptive plan on your sources because sometimes they won't work for you like that. You need to be flexible, you need to be helping build upon previous arguments that you've made, and you need to just develop your ideas clearly. All right, that's the big deal. All right, uh, so the other thing that I mentioned just a little bit ago is that you will, you will use one counter argument. This is gonna be located in the last body paragraph of your essay, uh, and you wanna make sure that that is um, available to your readers. All right, we will talk about that um, at a later time. All right, but for now, I just kind of want to go over the basics of the argumentative essay. All right, so now we are now here, 
All right, so your essay must be at least four full pages in length. All right, and contain a works cited page. Now, keep in mind that contain a works cited page does not mean it's part of the four, right? It is four pages plus a works cited page, so it becomes five in total. You have to use at least three scholarly sources for this essay. So what is a scholarly source, you might ask? Well, I might answer flippantly that there is a chapter in the MLA handbook about it. Um, but in a nutshell, I do strongly recommend you take a look at that. But in a nutshell, it is making sure that your source is written by an expert in the field, and they are written for an audience of experts or people working to become experts. All right? So that is basically it. All right, so you want to think of it like that. And now that, of course, might take a little digging. Sometimes you'll have to look into it further. I go through some techniques about this in that creating the sample document video. All right, so make sure to take that, take a look at that. Again, at least two pieces of evidence in each of your body paragraphs. Right, we need to see it. We need to see that this happens multiple times because if it just happens once, well, that's, uh, that's a fluke. Twice is getting to be more of a pattern. All right, we need at least a little bit of a pattern to buy the argument that you're making, okay? Um, now, a few caveats. No quotation from a source can be longer than three lines of text in your essay, All right? I don't want to see like half page quotations or anything like that. No, 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 no. You only take what you need. Same as what we did for the comparison contrast essay. Only use the information you need. Paraphrase when you can. Quote when the wording is perfect and you you can't even think of a better way to write this. All right, but make sure that quotation isn't longer than three lines. Um, In-text citations must be used for any and all quotations or paraphrases. Super, super, super important, okay? Um, and then each in-text citation should have a corresponding works cited citation uh, because otherwise they're not talking to one another. They don't tell you anything. They don't tell the reader anything. We need to see both. They always go hand in hand. They're BFFs. They like to hold hands when they're together, all right? Think about it like that. You'll never forget in-text citation, works cited page, right? Works cited citation. They're buds. Let them uh, hang out, all right? Your essay must include a valid counterargument in the last paragraph of your essay and dispel this, the counterargument in that same paragraph. So you might have heard of this in the past as a refutation, right? Basically, it's not enough to just spend an entire paragraph talking about what your counterargument is and why it's awesome or why it's, you know, an effective argument to make about the topic. No, 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 right? You want to see that and then you want to show your reader what that counterargument is. And then you want to say, but you know what? My argument, my perspective, my thoughts on this are more logical or they make more sense. Uh, and you explain why. All right, that's really what you want to do, okay? Um, again, the same reminder, use only third person in your essay. I'm still seeing a lot of that in the comparison contrast essays. So please, please, please make sure to remove evidence of first and second person. Uh, no eyes, no you, no me, no we, no us, all of that. Take that out. Universalize our ideas, okay? We spent a lot of time doing that. So we really need to make sure to put that into practice. Um, speaking of putting into practice, this essay you is going to utilize all of the skills we learned previously, right? All the skills that we've honed and developed, right? That way of showing, not telling from the illustration example essay, okay? And the solid use of organization that we used in our current count. Uh, our comparison contrast essay. All right, so those are the types of things that you really want to focus on, right? Utilizing those skills that we've already learned and now marrying them with a research component. All right, that's what we are looking to do. Um, so some further reminders, okay, that the evidence is meant to help convince the reader of your argument, but it does not make your argument for you. Um, evidence from sources must include an in-text citation and a corresponding work cited citation. Use formal language. Here we go. This is what you want to see. So potential topics. Okay, for this essay, any argumentative topic is on the table. The way I like to think about it is and something that I could argue in an argumentative essay, for me personally, is something that kind of gets me jazzed up so that when I talk about it with my family, they roll their eyes at me. All right, that's how I know uh, that I'm being argumentative. My parents hate 
argumentation. They hate the development of that, you know, like the, basically the skills, the skill set that I have, that I have been taught. They can't stand it. So as soon as I see them rolling their eyes, I know that I'm onto something here. And so if your situation is kind of similar, right? Um, you know, someone's like, oh, you're on this soapbox again. Um, you know, then you know, like, okay, so this is, this is good, right? This is something that I am passionate about, something that I am being clear about. And then you just augment it further. All right, so there's one topic that is off limits. That is the topic of abortion, okay? Um, I find it hard to divorce my own particular opinion. Uh, from this conversation. So rather than put you in a position where you are trying to convince someone who is unable to be swayed, I do not, I don't, I, I just don't allow you to use this topic. So I'm very sorry if this is something that you um, really feel passionate about. That is amazing, good for you, but you just can't feel passionate about it in the argumentative essay for this class. Okay, that's for your benefit, not for mine. Okay, um, but we do have um, one other thing that I want to point out, avoid arguments uh, that are based on religion or based on faith uh, because you can't, anyone cannot argue with religion or faith because this argument is based in belief and not in some sort of tangible, uh, tangible tr truth, like, and I don't mean that in, a, in an offensive way. But it's impossible to tell someone that something based in faith is not rationally accurate or uh, is, is not the way they think it is, right? Because they believe it's that way, right? And so because of the fact that no one would be able to argue against a faith-based argument, we're not able to use that in our essay, right? Because kind of the whole thing about argumentative essays is that people can argue against you. Right, and if you can just say, well, because I believe that to be true, then someone is not able to argue against you because they can't counteract your belief. You know, they can only make arguments toward you that you can easily dis discard because this is a belief that you hold. All right, so you need to put your reader in a space where they can question you, and you can't do that if your argument is based in faith. All right, so just sort of keep that in mind. Um, now, I have some examples. Now, you don't have to choose from these examples, but these are examples that people often do enjoy using. It's actually why I put them on this list. Um, so, legalizing of marijuana for cancer-related symptoms, okay? Um, sentencing reform for juveniles tried as adults. There's another one. Free speech protection, right, First Amendment, extended to use of hate speech on social media. Ethical treatment of animals for the purpose of animal testing on cosmetic products. And the legality of COVID-19 vaccine mandates for all hospital employees. So I want to point out something to you. Notice that none of these are like legalization of marijuana. That's it, right? It's not sentencing reform. That's it. It's not free speech protections. That's it. Because guess what? Each of these things... Um, they're amazing arguments that you can absolutely make, but you might need an entire collection of books to make that argument. All right, so we are working with four pages. Um, we really need to, you know, four pages before our Works Cited page. Um, so we really need to maximize our potential here. We need to narrow our focus. So if you see, each of these has three different levels of narrowing, right? We have legalization of marijuana. That's the first level, right? This broad, general level. And then we're like, oh, okay. So symptoms more generally would be kind of the narrower, right? We're saying, okay, so essentially we want to use marijuana, we want to make marijuana legal for medicinal reasons, right? But we don't only want to make it legal for medicinal reasons. We want to make it available for specifically cancer-related symptoms, Right, so we are super narrow. It's not just legalizing marijuana. It's not just legalizing marijuana for medicinal reasons. It's legalizing marijuana medicinally for cancer-related symptoms. Right, so we are taking it three levels in. Okay, same thing down here. Sentencing reform. There's our big guy. Right, big picture topic. And then we narrow it down 
juveniles, so we know we're talking about juvenile sentencing, but this is a specific subset of juveniles uh, that we're talking about sentencing reform for, and it's those juveniles tried as adults in the criminal justice system, right? So we go from big topic, slightly smaller, and even smaller, okay? So that's how you want to think about it. Same thing here, free speech, um, free speech extended to hate speech, okay? Right, so now we're at second level, and we are talking about hate speech on social media. So we've now limited it. It's not, we're not talking about hate speech that happens in person. We're not talking about hate speech that happens, um, you know, on a poster at a protest. We're talking about hate speech that happens on social media and whether there should be free speech protections uh, for that. Okay, so, you know, you really want to think your ideas through in terms of topics. Um, so I think you guys have the idea here. Each of them have three steps. It's not just, you know, COVID-19 vaccines, right? It is, well, the legality of a COVID-19 ma vaccine mandate for a specific subset of people, right? Hospital employees. So we take it three steps so that we, we are sufficiently narrow and we can really focus our attention, one, on finding sources uh, that work with our sufficiently narrowed argument, and two, so we can really develop it, right? We need to make it clear. All right, so again, we have our usual steps. We have our thesis statement. We have our draft assignment. We have the peer review. Uh, and then we have our final draft, okay? You can see our rubric. It is exactly the same. Uh, more or less, it's, a, it's slightly more focused on argumentation and argument, you know, an argumentative essay, uh, but this is, the, the concepts are the same. So definitely take a look at this uh, as you're writing. This is not anything that you're unfamiliar with already. All right, so your assignment for this week. On Blackboard, you're going to find three videos, okay? These are three commercials, two from the Super Bowl this year, and one, I think it was used in the Super Bowl a few years ago. I don't quite remember. Don't quote me on that. Uh, in a document, I want you to, after watching the videos, tell me which you feel is the least effective commercial, which you feel is kind of mm, pretty effective but could be better, and which is the most effective. Now, you might say, okay, well, this is subjective, so mm, how do you grade this? It's actually not subjective, okay? There are a few types of criteria that I want you to think about as you're watching. One, does it provide you with enough information to know what this um, company or whoever is producing this commercial, what they want you to do uh, with them, right? Are they providing you with enough information to be able to say, ah, yes, I would like to use their services, uh, or are they just not doing that? You know, um, I'd also like you to think about the way that they're going about doing this, right? There are things called rhetorical appeals. You might have heard of this before. Ethos, which is credibility. Are they using um, a well-known face to get the message across? And because this person is well-known, people are more receptive. Um, pathos, which is emotion. Is the commercial making you laugh and making you think and, you know, engaging with the product in a way uh, that makes you want to engage with it? And finally, we have logos, okay? What's going to happen with logos is that is a rational appeal, right? You are using logic. You are using data. You're using numbers, statistics, um, stuff like that to show people why a particular product or a particular idea is beneficial to them. All right, so those are the types of things that I want you to look for. Not only is the information that they're providing, um, you know, through the video, is that effective, right? Is the actual information they're sharing there so that you know uh, who this company is and what their goal is, right? Is it to sell you a service? Is it to sell you goods? Uh, you should be able to tell that, all right? Um, so is the evidence about their organization present? And is like what types of appeal are they using to help convey that information and those two things together right should really be able to help you identify which is the kind of weakest commercial which is like average and which is the strongest all right so just to break it down simply what you'll turn in obviously in MLA format is you know an indication of weakest average um, or mid-range, however you want to phrase it, and best, 
right? Show me that, okay? And then what I want you to do is write me a paragraph that talks about the different effectiveness, um, levels of effectiveness of these videos. All right, so that should be kind of fun, should be interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Enjoy your spring break. Bye.